Hey everybody, this video is called The Rise and Fall, and tonight, or today, we're continuing our study here in the book of Judges, where we're going to look at the rise and fall of Abimelech. So chapter 9, verse 1 through 3, it's a rather little bit longer chapter, says, Then Abimelech, the son of Jerubbaal, went to Shechem to his mothers and brothers and spoke with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Please speak in the hearing of all the men of Shechem, which is better for you, that all seventy of the sons of Jerubbaal reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember, I am your own flesh and blood. And his mother's brother spoke all these words concerning him in the hearing of all the men of Shechem, and their heart was inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. So, as I mentioned in the very last video, uh, Abimelech was Gideon's son. And Gideon, he had 69 sons, so he was wrapped up in polygamy. And Abimelech convinced his brothers on the mother's side to support him as king over his brothers on his father's side. And the men of Shechem, they agreed to accept Abimelech as their new leader and perhaps even accepting him as king over of Israel. In verse 4 and 5 says, So they gave him 70 shekels of silver from the temple of baal Berith, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless men, and they followed him. Then he went to his father's house at Oprah, and killed his brothers, the seventy sons of Jeroboam, on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jeroboam, was left because he had hid himself. So, Abimelech relatives from his mother's side gave him basically the fund, the the foundation, the the funding to star, uh, establish his leadership, and he started this by hiring hitmen to kill his brothers so that they could not rise against him or challenge his leadership. And his funds came from the temple of Baal. So we see that his funds are gathered in a wicked means. In verse 6 it says, And all the men of Shechem gathered together all at Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king beside the terebinth tree at the pillar that was of Shechem. So Beth Milo meant house of the fortress, which was a section of Shechem. And it was probably involving the tower stronghold that you see later on in verse 46. And the men of Shechem made Abimelech king here. And it's hard to tell who's worse. Was it Abimelech who was murdering the uh, brothers, or was it the men of Shechem who approved of it? And Abimelech was the a very ungodly leader, if you want to call him a leader, given to ungodly people who first rejected God's leadership over the nation. And so they accept this Abimelech guy who's a very cruel and oppressive, brutal man. And Abimelech's crowning took place at the same tree where Joshua had placed a copy of the law of God, which we looked at looked at back a few weeks ago, back in Joshua 24, 26. And the law was right there, but Israel refused to hear it or read it. In verse 7 through 15 says, Now when they told Jotham, he went and stood on top of Mount Gerizim, and lifted his voice and cried out, and he said to them, Listen to me, you men of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees once went forth to anoint a king over them. And they said to the olive tree, reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Should I seize given my oil which, with which they honor God and men, and go to sway over trees? Then the trees said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Should I seize my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to sway over trees? Then the trees said to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Should I seize my new wine, which cheers both God and men, and go to sway over trees? Then all the trees said unto the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, 
If in truth you anoint me as king over you, then come and take shelter in my shade. But if not, let the fire come out of the br bramble and devour the cheddars of Lebanon. So we see a little story here, a parable given. And you probably think more of the parables within the Gospels, like the Gospel according to Matthew. But verse 5, it showed that Jotham was the only son of Gideon to escape the massacre at the stone. And here he is telling a parable, and it wasn't just story time for entertainment. This was a time where he told a parable in the effort to rebuke the men of Shechem for their choice of making Abimelech as king. And he made the speech from the top of Mount Gerizim, and that was the mountain where Israel had heard the blessings of God. And we won't revisit that back in Deuteronomy 27:28. But God pronounced blessings upon an obedient Israel back in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 12, Deuteronomy 11:29, and Joshua 8:33. And that was approximately that was approximately 150 years before. And in the parable here, the worthy trees did not want to be king, but the unworthy bramble agreed to be king and bramble was a low thorny bush that offered shade to no one and you know definitely not a type of uh, vegetation you want around us today if you are in one of these heat wave states right now but the bramble warned that it would be an oppressive leader a ruler and destroy anyone who disagreed with him so you can kind of think of him as like a tyrant Kind of like Jim, Kim Jong-un. And one test of the character of a man is to see how he treats those who disagree with him. And if one's desire is only to destroy those who disagree, then he is much like the bramble, the plenty of good points, but no real substance of good. And the bush represents Abimelech, of course. In verse 16 through 21, it says... Now, therefore, if you have acted in truth and sincerity and making Abimelech king, and if you have dealt well with Jeroboam in his house and have done to him as he deserves, for my father fought for you, risked his life, and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. But you have risen up against my father's house this day and killed his 70 sons on one stone and made Abimelech the son of the female servant king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If you have acted in truth and sincerity with Jeroboam and with his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech and let them also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and Beth Milo. And let the fire come from the men of Shechem and from Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. And then Jotham ran away and fled, and he went to Bear and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, his brother. So Jotham raised, he acted in truth and sincerity just for the sake of argument. He did not believe that the 68 of his brothers were murdered for the same tr of truth and sincerity. The men of Shechem supported Abimelech because he was their brother and Abimelech's mother was from Shechem so he probably grew up in Shechem himself and Jotham's warning to the men of Shechem was their unwise choice that would later come back to hurt them and he predicted fire would come from Abimelech and devour them and after this bold warning he would run in fear for his life in verse uh, 22 through 25 it says after Abimelech had reigned over Israel three years, God sent a spirit of ill will between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dwelt treacherously with Abimelech, that the crime done to the seventy sons of Jeroboam might be settled and their blood be laid on Abimelech, their brother, who killed them, and on the men of Shechem who aided him in the killing of his brothers. 
And the men of Shechem set men in ambush against him on the tops of the mountains. And they robbed all who passed by them along the way. And it was told Abimelech. So in the course of God's providence, there appeared jealousy. There was distrust and there was hate. And God allowed it to work as punishment for the idolatry and the mass murder. And everything seemed to find between them for three years. But God removes the peace, bringing judgment between them. And the men of Shechem, they set ambushes on the mountains road and hoping to disrupt the trade routes on the mountain roads that profited Abimelech. In verse 26 through 29 says, Now Gael, the son of Abed, came with his brothers and went to Shechem. And the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. So they went out in the fields and gathered grapes from their vineyards and trolled them and made merry. And they went into the house of their God and ate and drank and cursed Abimelech. Then Gael, the son of Abed, said, Who is Abimelech and who is Shechem, that we should serve him? Is he not the son of Jeroboam? And is not Zebu his officer? Serve the men of Hamar, the son of Shechem, but why should we serve him? If only this people were under my authority, then I would remove Abimelech. So he said to Abimelech, increase your army and come out. So here we see a failed coup. And the men of Shechem lost their confidence in Abimelech. So they chose a new leader here named Gael, the son of Abed. And they were so confident that this new leader would protect them against Abimelech uh, that they had stoned uh, started at having drunk parties and openly cursed Abimelech and they even went as far as challenging Abimelech to a fight. In verse uh, 30 through 33, when Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gael, the son of Abed, his anger was aroused and he sent messengers to Abimelech secretly saying, take note, Gael, the son of Abed and his brothers have to come to Shechem. And here they are fortifying the city against you. Now, therefore, get up at by night, you and the people who are with you, and lie in wait in the field. And it shall be, as soon as the sun is up in the morning, that you shall rise early and rush upon the city. And when he and the people who are with him come out against you, you may then do to them as you find opportunity. So Zebu, Zebu was basically what you can think of today as equivalent to a city manager on behalf of Abimelech. And he told Abimelech all about what he needed to know about Gael in this rebellion. And Zebu was like an advisor to Abimelech. He advised him to come and attack the city with a surprise attack against the rebels of Shechem. In verse 34 through 41 says... So Abimelech and all the people who were with him rose by night and lay in wait against Shechem in four companies. When Gael, the son of Abed, went out and stood in the entrance to the city gate, Abimelech and the people who were with him rose from lying in wait. And when Gael saw the people, he said to Jebu, Look, people are coming down from the tops of the mountains. But Jebu said to him, You see the shadows of the mountains as if they were men. So Gael spoke again and said, See, people are coming down from the center of the land and another company from the diviner's terebinth tree. Then Jabul said to him, Where indeed is your mouth now in which you said, Who is Abimelech that we should serve him? Are not the people these the people whom you despised? Go out, if you will, and fight with them now. So Gael went out leading the men of Shechem and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased them, and he fled from him, and many fell wounded to the very entrance of the gate. Then Abimelech dwelt at Aruma and Jebul, drove out Gael and his brothers, so that they would not dwell in Shechem. And Abimelech agreed with and followed his suggested plan, and Jebul deceived Gael, allowing Abimelech's troops to take position with the advantage of their superior position. And Abimelech and his soldiers, they drove out Gael 
with his men. And when Jabul knew that Gao was at the disadvantage, he couldn't resist rebuking him for his proud, arrogant words against Abimelech, an enemy he could not defeat. And the diviner's terebinth tree was a tree that was regarded as superstituary, where mystical ceremonies and soothsayings were done. In verse uh, 42 through 45, says, And it came about on the next day that the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech. So he took his people, divided them into three companies, and lay in wait in the field. And he said, And there were the people coming out of the city. And he arose against them and attacked them. Then Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood at the entrance of the gate of the city. And the other two companies rushed upon all who were in the fields and killed them. So Abimelech fought against the city all that day. He took the city and killed the people who were in it. And he demolished the city and sowed it with salt. So with Gao being defeated at this point, Abimelech was... Uh, setting up again to establish control over the city of Shechem again. And both the outside and the inside of the city, they attacked and they killed the people of Shechem, including even bystanders, those who were not even directly involved in the rebellion. And he brings an annihilation upon the city where he sold it with salt as an act of polluting the soil and the water, as well as symbolizing a verdict of permanent barrenness as in Deuteronomy 23, uh, 29, 23 and Jeremiah 17 verse 6. And Abimelech's intent was fully nullified when Jeroboam rebuilt the city later on as his capital in the uh, book of 1 Kings 12, 25. In verse 46 through 49, it says, Now when all the men of the tower of Shechem had heard it, they entered the stronghold of the temple of the god of Bereth. And it was told Abimelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. Then Abimelech went up to Mount Zalman, he and all the people who were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bow from the trees and took it and laid it on his shoulder. Then he said to the people who were with him, What you have seen me do, make haste and do as I have done. So each of the people likewise cut down his own bow and followed Abimelech and put them against the stronghold and set the stronghold on fire above them so that all the people of the tower of Shechem died about a thousand men and a thousand women so though Abimelech was a ungodly and violent man he understood some of the basic principles that you need for leadership and he understood the importance of leading through the example of one's own actions. There is nothing of a true leader unless one leads, you know, and they put themselves out in the front and show how it's done. And he could tell his troops, do as I have done, and they did. And Abimelech massacred the last survivors of the city of Shechem, killing about 1,000 men and women. And this went on to fulfill verse 19 and 20 where Jotham gave a warning and for the people of Shechem even a secure tower could not protect them in verse uh, 50 through 55 says then Abimelech went to Thebes and he encamped against Thebes and took it but there was a strong tower in the city and all the men and women all the people of the city fled there and shut themselves in then they went up to the top of the tower so Abimelech came as far as the tower and fought against it. And he drew near the door of the tower to burn it with fire. But a certain woman dropped an upper millstone on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Then he called quickly to the young man, his armor barrier, and said to him, Draw your sword and kill me, lest men say of me a woman killed him. So his young man thrust him through and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man to his place. So after a very brutal victory at the tower of Shechem, Abimelech probably thought that he became an expert in attacking towers. 
So now he went to the Bez and he attacked the city and the tower there then. And at the Bez, a woman dropped a millstone we see on his head that caused a mortally wound to take him out. And Abimelech considered it to be manly to be killed by his own armor barrier. But he was still dead afterward. And, you know, he didn't want to be known as the guy who was killed at, by a woman. But Abimelech died as a proud man under the judgment of God for his wickedness. And long after his death, the woman was still credited for his death, which we'll be taking a look at in the end of the year. In verse 56, 57, to wrap up the chapter here, says, Thus God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech, which he had done to his father by killing his seventy brothers. And all the evil of the men of Shechem, God returned their own heads, and on them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbaal. So we can be certain that God will repay wickedness in either this life or eternity. And God had warned the men of Shechem through Jotham, yet they rejected the warning of God, and therefore they came to ruin. And the curse pronounced in verse 20 for the pervasive idolatry was carried out. So to wrap up this chapter, you know, we looked at Abimelech's rise to power by forcing his brothers to submit to himself. And he went on to murder his brothers as the men of Shechem made Abimelech their king. And we see that Jotham gave a warning through the parable of the trees. And Jotham applies the parable of the city of Shechem will be repaid for choosing such a worthless man. And Jotham's warnings were fulfilled as a spirit of ill will between Abimelech and Shechem that occurred. And the men of Shechem chose a new leader, and they chose the role of Jabu, who was the ruler of the city. And Abimelech defeated the rebellion of the men of Shechem, organized by Gael. And we saw that Abimelech attacked the citizens of the city of Shechem, including bystanders who weren't even part of what rose against him. And he goes on to conquer the city. And this is the unfortunate when tyrants come to power through violence. They will often take out innocent civilians or other people who are not even directly related to them or even known by them. And we looked at the massacre at the Tower of Shechem. And the man-made towers may fall, but we have a secure tower in our God, as Proverbs 18 verse 10 says. So, you know, man might be able to take down the towers like the World Trade Centers, but God is our strong tower and his name is our strong tower. And the righteous run to it and are safe. And in King David in Psalm 61, 3 said that God is our safe refuge, a fortress or strong tower from the enemy. And so a big theme that we can pick up out of today's chapter is we see God's judgment upon Abimelech. And the chapter ends with the certainty of God's judgment that when God says he's going to bring judgment, he's going to bring judgment. And the story of Abimelech, the men of Shechem and Jotham, it shows us that there is a real and terrible price to pay for rejecting God's warnings. And if you are not in Christ, uh, if you're listening, if you are not in Christ, then you are subject to the wrath and the judgment of God. You are awaiting judgment from God on your own accord. And rejecting Christ for salvation is a real terrible price that comes along with it. That includes death and eternal punishment, separation from God. And Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And so our sins have built a wall between us and God. We are separated from God 
who is a holy, perfect, righteous God. And sin costs death, but through Jesus Christ, we have justification if we place our faith in Jesus as our Savior. And Jesus, he went to the cross. He was brought to the cross, arrested, beaten, where, you know, he was whipped with whips that had pieces of glass on him. Jesus was put on the cross, nailed to the cross, where he died, and he was buried in a cave and rose again on the third day. And his blood, the shedding of his blood, has brought us the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus was buried and rose again on the third day, which is where he conquered death and the eternal separation between us and God. And you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved and believe and turn to Christ for salvation. And let me know if you are responding to Christ, you know, and I would like to uh, reach out further and talk with you and see, you know, if there's any ways I can be an encouragement to you. But uh, that's going to wrap up this video today. And we'll be looking at two more minor judges and the more oppression next week. So I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Try to stay cool if you can. And we'll see you next week. God bless.